Today I want to talk to you about success in the ministry. Um, first, I was going to actually label this or title this uh, teaching segment, How to Measure Success in the Ministry. But as I prepared my notes and kind of mauled it over in my mind and actually ran through this, um, and then the camera didn't die on me, but it stopped recording on me and whatnot, <laughs> I realized I'm actually not talking about how to measure success in the ministry. In fact, that might be a hard thing to do, but rather I'm just talking about success in the ministry. Um, and so you might be wondering to yourself, well, why are we talking about this? The aim of this channel, the aim of these videos that we've been producing is for the lay person, it's for the person in the pew. And the ministry is often associated with the minister, the pastor, right? Um, in fact, often we'll use the term that, you know, I felt a call to the ministry, and then some people will try to be like, oh, well, yes, we all have a ministry, but I meant full-time ministry. Once again, I think I would have a problem with that term because I believe that we all should be in full-time ministry. That it, it's, um, I've used this phrase a lot, and I'll, I'll say it a lot throughout this teaching probably, is that in ministry and evangelism is not an event, but rather it's a lifestyle. And so that in your workplace and, and everywhere that you find yourself really, you would be ministering, you would be evangelizing. It's just something that naturally the Christian should be doing. But anyhow, let me read to you from Ephesians chapter 4, uh, verses 11 and 12 in the English Standard Version. It says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, which is pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Uh, and so right there we see this thing that it's the saints are to do this ministry of building up the church, of growing the church. Um, and so you might wonder, well, who are the saints? It's not a term we use that often in today's world. Um, but if you're watching this and you are a Christian, then you are a saint. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, but it's not, you know, we, no one's really going to refer to you as St. Chris or something like that. That might now because it... It's, uh, anyways, whatever. Um, but in, in this, this idea there that the church is to train up the saints for the work of the ministry. And so us, as your pastors, as your teachers, and this church, one of the missions of it is that we would be building up the, uh, the saints, that they would be, feel equipped, that they would feel prepared for the ministry. And then there's the question of, well, what is the ministry? There's a number of components to that that could fit into it. There's the idea of sharing the gospel, that you would be able to effectively share the gospel, that you, would, you know what the gospel is, and you would be feeling confident and, and able to explain that and minister to someone in that way. There's, uh, in the area of ministry, there's discipleship, that if you're a mature Christian, you would be able to disciple, that is, influence the younger Christian or other mature Christians uh, and draw them closer to God and help them strengthen their walk in their ways with God and grow in theology and grow in doctrine. And then we have this also area of ministry of correction where someone is in error, their, their theology is wrong or they're thinking wrong about something or they're allowing worldly teaching to influence them or just poor doctrine to, to influence them, that we would offer correction in that area. And that's ministry as we, we bring them back into truth and we bring correction among them. And then there's teaching. And yes, you know, some of us would have the title of teacher, um, and the Bible talks about that, and that we would have, we're held to a higher standard uh, because we're teaching the Word of God, and that's important. But if you're a parent, then you're a teacher. You're teaching your children. You should at least be raising them up in the ways of God. Um, and there's also this micro level of teaching that you would do as you bring correction, as you talk about the ways of God, as you go over these things with people, as you challenge the worldly living that they, they get into. Um, and, and so that's all part of the ministry. Now, when we talk about ministry, when we talk about evangelism, there is a huge focus, massive focus on sealing the deal, as it were of getting the person to the gates kind of thing, right? Of leading someone to the Lord. Uh, in fact, oftentimes, if you were to like Google 
um, success in ministry or success in evangelism survey or something like that, you'd probably find on many of those surveys um, a question along the lines of how many people have you led to the Lord in the last 12 months? But in the Gospels, Jesus is teaching, he talks about how uh, some people will sow and some people will reap. There's this idea of in ministry um, that it always, it's not always about you getting those, those final moments with someone where they commit their life to God. But there's little micro moments all the way before that of, of, of people who influenced that person, who challenged that person, who loved that person, who presented the gospel to that person. And, and their work, they do not get to see the fruit of that labor. But it's still success in ministry. I remember reading about this missionary somewhere in Europe a while back. And they went, they went to this town, and I don't remember if they died there or they just lived there for a long time. And they preached and they taught and they ministered and they evangelized. And they did not see one convert. Not one. And a lot of people would look at that and they'd say, man, you know, that guy failed in the ministry. Anyways, he died or he moved on or something like that. And the next guy came in and a revival ran through the area. People were coming to God left and right, and, and it was wonderful. That's the fruit of that other guy. He, he, he worked the soil. He tilled that. He challenged their thinking. He, he ministered to them, and that's success. We don't often get to see that. We all, don't, the world doesn't like to think that way. We think in these business terms of you need results, and you need results now. You need to meet your quota now and that kind of thing. It's not how the church operates. At least it's not how it should, and it's, it's not proper. It's not... We, we sh- it shouldn't all be about numbers. It should be about, are we honoring God? Are we doing what He wants us to do? Um, and a lot of times, that work of ministry is we don't get to see that grand result of someone turning their life over to God. But God used you to influence them and to present the gospel to them. And, and, and that counts for something. That is success. There's also this idea, it was quite popular, it seems to have faded out, but I'm sure it's there a little bit, of I just need to get so-and-so to church. I just need to get my neighbor. I just need to get my coworker. I just need to get my brother to church. Youth, you know, they were told you need to get your fellow students to youth group kind of thing. Um, And that's true. And people, I shouldn't say that's true. It's effective and it happens. And, um, and, And I know there's people who have come to church from those invitations and have found God, and that's wonderful, and that's great. The reality is, is that more times than not, you yourself actually have a connection with that person. You yourself can speak into that person's life, and, and you're effective in that area, and, and you can evangelize to them, oftentimes, probably, more effectively than I can. Uh, sure, I'm a pastor, and I'm a minister, and I'm a teacher, um, but I have no authority in their life. I have no merit in their life. I don't have any influence in their life. And you do. And so I hope that us as a church are training you up in such a way that you're prepared to minister to that person. There's that. The role of the church then, well, what is it? If the role of the church is not to be this catch-all that we bring people to and then they're, they're, they're then presented the gospel and that's where they come to be evangelized. If that's not the role of the church, then what is it? The role of the church is glorifying God of training up the saints, of building the church, of building that community, of edifying and encouraging and teaching doctrine and, and bringing correction and glorifying God, of coming together and worshiping God. That's, that's, that's what we should be about. The church is not a social club. The church is not a community center. I have heard this far too many times asked as a question, as a way to measure is your church successful or not. The question goes, it's very common in church leadership circles, uh, if your church disappeared overnight would, overnight, would the community notice? I think the question is missing the mark. We're not here to serve the community. We're here to serve God. And, and hopefully our saints, as they go out into the community, are ministering to, God, or ministering to people and, and drawing them closer to God and challenging them and loving them and, and that kind of thing. And if the church happens to have as a byproduct, as a bycatch that you know, people are coming to be saved through their services, that's great. Um, but we are to, 
We're to train up the saints. We're to develop the saints. We're to be about discipling the saints. Um, you'll see sometimes, uh, in, in fact, a very popular church, a very big mega church in North America. Um, the pastor actually, a very common preacher, very well-known preacher, um, or motivational speaker, I'd rather call him. Um, but he, he talked about his church. He said, you know, our church is for the new Christian. If you want to grow in theology and grow your head and, and grow in your understanding and go somewhere else kind of thing, oh my word, you're, you're having a, a, a church that's gathered around just basic theology, that they're not growing in any depth. Where is the love of your Lord, your God, with all of your mind? Where is that? And so the church needs to be about that. We need to be growing people um, in quantity, or sorry, in quality. Once again, in the idea of quantity, it's not about numbers. It's not about numbers of people in the pew. It's not about numbers of dollars in the plate. Let's take this example for example. Let's say you had a church of 100 people, and it was all fluff. Their teaching was very fluffy. They called themselves Christians, but they didn't really know God. They weren't devoted to God. They were still worldly living. Not much had changed about them. They didn't know anything about the Bible, very basic level, but they thought they were Christians and, and whatnot, 100 people. And then they are searching for a pastor. So a pastor goes in there and he starts ministering to them. He starts teaching them. He teaches them sound doctrine. He teaches them what it is to be a Christian. He teaches them that they need to give up the ways of the world. They need to pursue the heart of God. They need to grow after these things. And they worship God. And he challenges the worldly living that they're in. And at the end of, as time goes on in his ministry, 90 of these people say, you know what? This isn't for me. I'm not interested in Christianity. I want to go live for myself. I want to live in the world. They leave the church. The church drops in attendance by 90%. It drops in its offering by 90%. And you're left with 10 people who say, I love God. I love God with all that I am. I want to worship him. I want to glorify him. I want to praise him. I want to share the good news about God. That is success. And according to so many different books and articles written, church leadership and how to grow your church, that guy should be fired because he allowed his church to decline by 90%. And I would say that is a glowing, that is a wonderful success because he, at the end of the day, he had people that actually know God, that love God. I'm not interested in fluff. I'm not interested in in. In, in false Christianity, in worldly Christianity, in, in Christianity that has no substance to it. I'm not interested in that. I want people who are all in after God, who are being challenged, who are growing, who honor the word of God, who worship God with all that they are in every area of their life. It's not about numbers. It's about quality. It's about depth. Are people growing closer to God? Are people moving further away from sin? Are they loving God fully? Those are the questions that should be asked to measure success. I want to share a couple success stories just to kind of highlight the diversity of success in ministry. Now, these are from my own life. Um, first one would be simply when I was in high school. I was working uh, at a store and uh, uh, at near closing time, I would end up mopping the floor of this little uh, farmer's market, and one of my co-workers, we would often talk about God, and we would talk about Christianity, and we would talk about that, and, you know, the question came up, you know, you know, what happens after someone dies if they know God or if they don't know God, and we had all these great conversations, and then finally I invited this person to church, as, as was the custom, that's the method of evangelism at the time that was presented to us, although I was evangelizing to her outside of that as well. She came to church, and then afterwards, we went to Tim Hortons and asked a bunch of questions, and I answered the questions as best as I could. And the next week, she came back, and she gave her life to God. Success, right? Check the box. There are so many people before me that had encounters with this young lady who, who ministered to her, and I would say it was successful. They didn't see the fruit. They didn't see that change. But they challenged her thinking, they loved her, and they cared for her, and they prayed for her, and, and they witnessed to her, and they did all these other things. And that's success. And then after her conversion in discipleship, um, uh, you know, mine and her relationship were brothers and sisters in Christ, but it, it kind of 
swindled out and, and she ended up making connections with other people that she had more things in common with and, and they discipled her and that is success and it's wonderful. I remember when I was working for a company in Edmonton, I was again a secular position and uh, this coworker that I had was very, very against Christianity um, and very much for the world. But there was one day at lunchtime, we're sitting at the table, me and her having lunch, and, uh, and she said, you know, I like you and this other guy that, I worked, that worked with us who went to the same college as me, um, because you know why you believe what you believe. And then she says, and you're not always evangelizing to me. And I kind of responded with, yeah, I am. And shook her a little bit, and she says, well, you're not evangelizing to me right now. I said, oh, no, I am. <laughs> and uh, she didn't like that. And so I clarified. I said, do I think that you're going to be a Christian at the end of this conversation? No, I doubt that. But if I can correct some of the misconceptions you have about God and his church, then that is success. And that was. That was success in the ministry right there. I don't know what happened to her. I don't know um, what, but I know that I changed and I challenged and I corrected some of the things that she thought about God and about God's people and about Christianity. And, and, and I loved her in a way that she had never experienced before in her life. She was used to the love of the world, but I, I presented this Christian side of love that she wasn't used to, um, and that was success. A recent success here in the ministry, um, one of the roles I have here at the church is I take care of the youth program. And one of the things we do at youth is we do sword drills, where I'll say a scripture, you know, Acts 3.29, and they'll all repeat it after me with their Bibles in the air, and then I say, go! And they come down and they have to get to it as quick as they can. And uh, then the first one that gets to it reads and, and they win the round kind of thing. And I had a student come out uh, and, and he's still coming. He's part of our group. And he was new to Christianity and he was not winning in sword drills at all. Uh, some, of, some of our students are very quick when it comes to finding their scriptures, which is wonderful. Um, and so he was getting beat every single time. And then the next week he came out and it was bang bang, bang. He was getting them. And I said, were you practicing? Like it was such a dramatic change. I asked him, were you practicing? Yeah, that's success. He took interest in the word of God. Like he's, he's going home and he's looking at the order of Bible, order of the Bible, and he's reading his scripture and he's getting invested in that. It might be for a, a playful game, but regardless, he's spending time in the word and it's successful. And so this all boils down, the idea of, of success in the ministry is simply this. Serve God and be faithful to Him. Don't worry about the evaluation of men. Ask yourself, am I honoring God in what I'm doing? Am I being faithful to God in what He wants me to do? Is your, is your ministry, is your evangelism, is, is what, how you operate done in such a way that at judgment you will hear the words from Jesus, well done, my good and faithful servant. And is that true? Are you a good and faithful servant of God? May your work be to glorify God, not to add to the budget or to build up your name or anything like that, or selfish gain or anything like that, but that you would glorify God in all that you do, and that you're evangelizing, that you're ministering to people, that you have that ministry, that you see that that's one of the things that God wants of you. Um, I hope that's an encouragement to you today. And I hope that you intentionally look at how you're living and think, am I ministering effectively? Am I, am I ministering to the people around me? Am I representing God well? Have a great week and honor God in all that you do.